My name is David Estes, co-founder and CTO of Morpheus, and uh, I'm here to introduce MVM to you guys. So we're going to talk about uh, Morpheus's embedded KVM-based hypervisor solution. Uh, we've been working on this for quite some time. Um, like Brad said in an earlier presentation, that uh, you know we didn't want to expose this to our customers because it was used internally. We've used it for a long time, but VMware opened that door for us with the Broadcom acquisition. So let's let's get into it. So uh, here I've got an MVM cluster already up and running, and we're going to get into this here in a minute, but you actually can do this in infrastructure clusters. We manage it in the same place you do your Kubernetes clusters. You can see it's got some hosts, it's got some uh, Ceph, hyper, hyper converged console, and all that type of stuff. So we're going to dig into this. Uh, the other thing I did is I went ahead and wanted to show you how easy it is to set up an MVM cluster. So I've actually provisioned some nested VMs uh, for the purposes of demonstration here instead of bare metal. This particular one is on bare metal. So I'm going to go over here uh, to create cluster, and I went ahead and pre-filled this in. Uh, but basically, you go to clusters, you get a cluster, and you give it the uh, SSH credentials to these uh, Ubuntu 22 boxes. And Morpheus is going to go in and prepare those and turn them into MVM hypervisor. So um, I'm going to hit next here. You can see there's a lot of options, right? So this is the uh, hyperconverge option. You can choose non-hyperconverge, where you can actually just point it to external storage, fiber channel, iSCSI targets, or NFS. Morpheus also has hyperconverge, where it can but Ceph for you. Um, more than that, it also allows you to configure your management network interface, your storage network interface. Um, if you've got compute, like a trunk you want to use, um, you, you can actually set that up with a bonded pair or whatnot. And then you can also give it a list of all the VLANs you want to initially expose. This is manageable after the fact. This is just kind of like, hey, get me started, right? So I'm going to hit next here. And it's going to actually do some validation prep. It's going to go check all three of those hosts, make sure everything that I've entered is correct. And I did that on purpose. You can see here it's already discovered that the data device I provided is not correct. So I'm going to actually fix that. It's actually VDB because it's nested here. And I'm going to re-enter those credentials to connect. So in the help um, converge solution, I mean, what, what's your storage base? Is some software-defined storage, Ceph or something? Or Yeah, it's using Ceph, which is a pretty industry popular one. Uh, you may have seen it in OpenStack. Cinder largely uses Ceph. Um, it's been around a long time, so... Just now hit 8.0. So it's leveraging Ceph for the hyperconverge. So I'm going to hit complete. And it's going to go off and prepare that hyperconverged all in one cluster. Um, I can actually dig into it. You can add posts later after the fact, right? You got to start with at least three for hyperconverged. With the other modes, you can go down to one if you just want a single node and then scale up uh, as you need. So there's an add, add hypervisor option and it'll prep that. The system is also, once it's finished here, you're actually going to see. A lot of history is going to tell you exactly what it's doing, what's going on. Um, once it gets past this finalizing stage, which is basically just it's installing that Morpheus agent on the box for communication. Um, and once that's finished, it will uh, give us uh, more details to what's going on. So given the time, I'm going to move off of this. So I've got a cluster already up and running here. And this is actually, if you go into host, you can see it's running uh, three hosts in this environment. It's got, uh, it's actually running on some old Power uh, PowerEdge R620s. We have multiple environments we've been testing for a while on older hardware, newer hardware. We've got HPE blades, Dell blades, that kind of thing. Um, but provisioning is just like you guys saw in the earlier presentation. I can say, hey, I'm going to provision something to this. Let's go add, uh, you know, uh, let's go add Rocky Linux. We did Ubuntu earlier. I'll add Rocky. Um, I'm going to pick my group in cloud here, right? So I'm going to hit next. Um, and then I'm going to pick version. There's a resource pool. There's the VLANs I can pick from. We're going to leave it on 10. Um, you can see your data stores are all there. So it's doing discovery of data stores. You can manage your data stores. Zero basically means use the image size. I'm going to set it to 10 in this case. Um, you can pick your resource pool, which is that MVM cluster. All those options are available. I can actually pick a host. Don't have to, though, because Morpheus will automatically do resource planning and pick the best host. Uh, I can actually choose all those options you saw before. I can do, you know, let's do five of them at once, five copies. And it's going to go off and create five Rocky Linux VMs for us. Now, I've already got some up and running here. Uh, we've already deployed earlier running on the uh, R620s. You can see their stats, the seat memory storage TPU. You can actually do hypervisor console um, as well. Man. <laughs> Security Down. number one. Someone's aggressively changed our timeout on our on our SSO there, I think. So. Well, that's actually, that's an interesting 
kind of like incident. Uh, do you support just in time uh, access to to the UI or yes. pretty much any any sort of access? Mm -hmm. Yep, we support tons of different types. Uh, all that all that's configurable. Um, I don't want to get into that too much in depth. We talked about that a little bit earlier, but yeah, you've got all that configuration capability. In this environment, particularly, they just have it aggressively set to kick me out. Um, you can also set uh, idle session timeouts and things like that as well. Don't take it personally. <laughs> yep. Uh, so you see here, there's a hypervisor console provided. So, you know, I've got all that capability and it's secure, all that type of stuff for the hypervisor. I can resize this VM2. I can say, hey, I'm going to add a second disk. You know, maybe I want to give it a little bit more RAM. I want to do that on the fly. Um, depending on the change, it might trigger a restart, so it's going to let you know. So it might say this this particular case is going to cause a restart. It doesn't always. It depends. Um, it does support hot resize. Um, normally, when you're going to a multi-core, it typically triggers a, a resize or an on-off. You're going from single core. I think that's the one case. Um, that being said, uh, we've got these other VMs that look like they've already they're in process here. So let's go look at 45. You can see it's already in finalizing. We get this nice history of what's going on, just like we do with VMware and our other clouds. So we have all that capability, just like before. The other thing we can do, let's go to one that's already running. We can drill into its its resource, so it's its server, right? And I can say, hey, I want to I want to manage placement of this. I want to do some, you know, I want to do failover. I want to lock it to NVM three and do failover. And what that means is it'll stay on NVM three. It won't move um, unless NVM three is down. Um, then it will move, so it does do auto start. If the host goes down, it'll auto restart these on other hosts. I can also move it right now. So let's leave it on auto, and it's on three right now. Let's move it to MVM one. So we can do live migration without any drop in connectivity. We'll actually see that in the history here as well. There's a move server operation occurring as we speak. This also does periodically do uh, dynamic resource scheduling. So it's monitoring the balance of your cluster and automatically rebalancing it for you. Well, kind of the table stakes with VMware, right? But th these are less common in the uh, KVM world. So these are things you kind of got to highlight, right? All that all that capability is available to you. Uh, does Backups it, are available as well. Does a console function? I, I saw that was a headless server. Does it also support headful? Uh, so UI? Yeah, I had a console up for you earlier. Uh, like graphical UI? Yeah, so this yep. is full hypervisor KVM console. So it supports U, uh, UEFI, secure boot, um, I would spin up a Windows instance, but in the case of my demo time, I don't have time to show you that. But yeah, yes, <laughs> it's fully GUI capable. <laughs> so, all right. Um, moving on here, we've got this other cluster. I did want to show you uh, the cluster we talked about earlier. It is actually, you can see here, it's doing a lot of prep, right? So it's going to actually do the MVM install, prep Ceph, OVS, all the work here is being done. So it's leveraging that automation framework that Morpheus has to do this. Uh, which is very powerful. It's the same one we use for our Kubernetes. It's the same one you have full access to um, as a consumer of the product for building your own automation tasks. Um, so once this finishes up, this does take a little bit of time, right? It's been a lot of prep here. So we may not have time to see this finish, but um, we can always go back to the other environment here. So that's MVM at a top level. Um, you can see you have all that same provisioning capability, all the feature set capabilities that you had before, tagging um, as well, cost management is all there. You can set your t-shirt sizes for service plans. We give you details of your Ceph cluster. We monitor that for you. We do state assurance. You can say, hey, I want to create it. I actually want to connect this to an external data store. You can see we have NFS here and we have our staff, but I can say, hey, I want to connect it to a global file system too, a clustered file system on iSCSI. I could do that or on Fiber Channel if I have it available or I could pick another NFS pool. So you can manage your data stores there. Um, you can also manage your volumes. You can manage your virtual images um, as they're transferred over to the environment. So you've got management of virtual images. You can also manage your network. So we've got VLANs one, two through 10, right? I can say, hey, I want to add another OVS port group. Um, and you know, pick the VLAN, pick the router, uh, all that type of stuff, pick the host bridge I want to leverage. Um, and then off I go. So that's uh, the management of the network stuff. Overlays are actually being worked on right now, so you'll be able to do overlays here soon. Um, and differential backups are in progress at the moment as well for differential storage. I think well, they, we didn't get into in the VM where we uh, Dave and team actually wrote a full you know full overlay for NSX, and so a lot of the you know that object representation model has come in handy as we're 
doing that on top exactly. of the Yeah, all that's in networks. So you have networks, routers, all that type of stuff. As a matter of fact, we sync the OBS. There's the OBS bridge domain right there from that cluster. Um, and I can leverage that when I'm creating that OBS port group. So I can say, hey, let's create one, pick an MBM, and you get all those options, right? So I can say, there's that host bridge. So a VLAN's on, say it's VLAN 17. It's going to go create that. The system also does state assurance, meaning it monitors all the hosts on the cluster. And if you drill into that cluster and do some manual management of the cluster or that host on the cluster, um, A, you can do that. B, if you make changes there, Morpheus will discover that. If you remove things that should be part of the cluster, Morpheus will bring them back. So it'll do some state checking of your cluster and keep it healthy. Got it. A few minutes for Q&A, too, if you, uh, I mean, I know we did, ran hot through some did of you discuss? Did you discuss how the support works on this? So if I run into a problem building cluster? There are no problems. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Works perfectly every time. Um, no, just kidding. Uh, yeah, Morpheus has a support SLA. So we have a support team that are, that are ready to go. Now, from a, now, right now we're in beta, so don't call us right now. Um, we actually do have a, so we do have a, a very active discussion forum actually that's gotten we have a lot of our, our OEMs, our MSPs, our end customers, our field engineers are, are active and uh, they just exposed a, an MVM section. So uh, if you have any comments, feedback, need support help there. Um, one of the things as I think forward towards the end of the year from a go to market, because we do have strategic relationships with most of the large hardware OEMs, you know, I'm thinking we're going to start. Start there first from a from a go to market because that helps reduce our you know our footprint you know from a hardware qual like they've got mounts so, labs and hardware and that's yeah. that's what happens between beta and GA is you know so eventually there's I got to figure out how to a, make it real and scalable and from a go to market so eventually there's going to be a hands on support oh. type system oh yeah we will yeah okay. it's going to be fully supported as part of Morpheus again I think that. The value, I think, what we've seen from, you know, from the Broadcom VMware acquisition and even their own go-to-market, right? I mean, you don't buy vSphere, you buy VCF, right? They, they, they want the whole enchilada, but it's very myopically focused on VMware because that's what Broadcom spent a bunch of money for. We want that, you know, in an agnostic way. So when we think about you know, MVM, it's not to go sell a hypervisor to a mom and pop. It's to sell a, you know a full stack platform that includes, you know, a, a robust hypervisor option, as well as hooks into your sovereign cloud, your new TNX, your being, you know, what else you have. So that that's that's really kind of our thought, at least from out of the get go is, you know, we're gonna maintain our continued focus on our target markets, on service providers, on large enterprise, we'll get to the mid-sized businesses via those service providers, right? If they wanna take it down market and provide a hosted Kubernetes or hosted MVM option, and certainly service providers are among the both more more technically demanding and more cost conscious of 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 the target <laughs> segments. They will make you better as a vendor if you sell to MSPs. And like I said, they're about thirty five percent of our our customer base. What um, about um, the the sort of hypervisor ecosystem, data protection, yeah. um, those kinds of elements? Um, back to the plugin architecture, right? Um, so uh, we had uh, specifically for MVM. For MVM, so started as in early days because we're in our own beta, but those same plugin, you know, primitives David can talk to, right? If we're talking to backups, to, you know, to the ecosystem, yeah. if they have KVM relevant products that can click in, we would want to expose those. Um, you know, and after right. this, I was at, funny enough, I was at VMworld and a guy came up, he was uh, self proclaimed the leader in backup for OpenStack and wanted to write a backup plugin for. For us, so we would we would look for the same from others. Yep. So, so you guys support so many components. Uh, I'm curious the process and timeline for a customer from all right. We've spun up Morpheus. Mm -hmm. uh, how do they get to? We're using it fully in our existing multi cloud environment and integrating some of our existing automation workflows as part of it. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll maybe break it into into phases. Yeah. Right. And like all things, people in process are much of the challenge, not, not the underlying tools and technology. If we just think about standing up Morpheus itself, getting it ready, getting it integrated, basic cataloging, RBAC setup, you know, we can do a, a POC in a day, but when we think about a production service deployment, that's a sub 30 day window, right? We have a services team or we work with our partners. It is a 
relatively quick install when you compare that to a, a typical you know, ARIA VRA deployment or God help you some homegrown you know, monstrosity, which is what we sometimes dig people out of, uh, which takes years. So sub 30 days is our typical get it stood up. Then we think about how a company is rolling out this internally, right? They're going to start with a given team project, you know, something that drove the initial compelling event for them. And then they you know, usually scale internally. So over the course of you know, several months, if not a year, you know, I mean, they, they, they will start with a, a team and a platform and a group, maybe a couple of clouds. And then as part of their own change management, start to kind of onboard and move to other teams and expose it to, to other groups within their enterprise. And that's really where you know we lean on you know some of our services partners, right? So either either global systems integrators, local partners, um, you know OEMs like HP's advisory professional services team has you know, dozens of engineers who do complex migrations and you know mapping of functional requirements and user acceptance testing. We're you know we're more focused on that front end first thirty days, get it up and running. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a taillight guarantee. We're not like, see ya, goodbye, good luck. I mean, we, we are there for the long haul, but that's where we partner with our, you know, our partners in the ecosystem to kind of help handhold because there's so many dependencies around the tooling.